Have you guys ever noticed with intermittent fasting where you're totally fine during your fasted period, but then as soon as you start eating, you get starved? Well, there's actually a couple things that you might be doing wrong when you go to break your fast. So I'm going to be going over all of that in today's video. All right, guys, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science back and holistic methods that you can use in order to feel amazing again. And part of that is figuring out why you get so hungry when you go to start to eat. Now, first of all, why does it matter if you get hungry? Now, this is actually a really important component, especially if weight loss is a goal of yours, because as we know, with increased hunger comes increased snacking as well. And with increased snacking, you're getting even less gut rest between those meals within your window, which means that it's effectively shutting off your MMC pathway between those meals, which is going to cause more bloating as a result. So not only will increased hunger cause more of the bloating because of the snacking, it also means that you're more likely to make those food decisions that are not going to support your wellness goals. So when you're hungry, like really feeling hungry, there's usually a state of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar that's going on with it as a result. And this is a state where you really can't fight your physiology. You know, it's actually kind of dangerous to have low blood sugar. So your body is going to be looking for those fast sources of energy that are typically just high sugar types of foods. So that's why you're going to be craving those foods that are more sugar dense, especially at the end of the day or between meals, which will cause your insulin to spike, which will cause you to be more of that storing mode, which will not help you to achieve your wellness goals. So simply put, you cannot fight your physiology, which means that we want to make sure that you aren't hungry between your meals. Now let's take a look at why you aren't even hungry during your fasted state. So when you first wake up, your body is actually naturally in a fat burning state. Your blood glucose levels are stable. You haven't eaten anything to really cause that spike or fall in your blood glucose levels. And so you're just using that steady source of fuel from your own fat stores, which means as a result, you're not going to be hungry. Now, if you get really hungry after your first meal, especially with intermittent fasting, then you're probably doing these one of two things wrong when you go to break your fast. Now, the first is you're eating a meal that causes you to have a really big spike and fall in your blood glucose levels. So remember hunger, one of the main things that are associated with it is hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. Now, when you are in that fasted state, your blood glucose level is very stable. But if you go to have something that's really high in sugar or really high in carbohydrates in general, it's going to cause a spike in your blood glucose levels, which means that insulin is going to rush over to try and bring it back down. And as a result can overcompensate and bring it back down below that baseline, which is that hypoglycemia area, which is where you really experience those sugar cravings or that insatiable type of hunger. Especially if you're feeling really hungry or ravenous within one to two hours after your meal, that's a huge sign that hypoglycemia or low blood sugar is in play. Now, do you guys remember that break fast mistakes video that I did? If not, definitely check the card for the details. I'll also have it linked in the description down below. But one of the things I talk about in that is not using a very high carb meal to break your fast for this exact reason. Now there are a ton of other ways to make sure that you actually get those satiating types of meals that'll stabilize your blood glucose levels. I've shared quite a few recipes as well. I'll have my favorite fat burning smoothie that I used to break my fast again linked down below. But if you are getting that one to two hours after your meal of extreme hunger, then it's definitely important to make sure that you're looking at how stable your blood glucose is getting from your first meal. And if it isn't very stable, then making sure that you adjust your meal to allow for that. And then the second problem is that you don't have enough of either protein, fat, or fiber, or all of them. Now, even if you aren't eating a high carbohydrate meal, it's still possible you simply aren't eating enough of the right foods in order to be satiated. And each of these three components has a different mechanism for how it turns off our hunger and makes it so that we are satiated. Now, with fiber, its main goal is that it's actually acting as a stretch mechanism within the stomach that tells your brain that it's full. Now, this affects that immediate satiation, which is how you feel full when you actually go to eat, not just hours later. Protein, on the other hand, causes a secretion of something called peptide YY, and this acts more on that chemical side rather than the physical side of satiation, where peptide YY or PYY will physically slow down the intestine digestion, which allows for your body to better absorb the nutrients so that it can slow it down and you know, physically grab the nutrients from your food. And this slowing effect is what's going to make it so that you are not hungry between meals. And what's cool is that both fat and fiber also have an effect on peptide YY. And speaking of fat, fat has another mechanism where it stimulates something called 
CCK or cholecystokinin. And this slows down the release of food from the stomach to the small intestine, which just like with peptide YY, this helps to again, slow down the release so that you are going to be full between meals. If you didn't have these components, then it's going to be a much faster move through your intestines, which means that you're not going to be as satiated for as long and therefore also feel hungry right after your meal. And a great strategy for this is making sure that you are looking to see that you have each of these components. And I do have a really great free smoothie recipe that you guys can check out right here that incorporates all three of these components to keep you satiated so that you aren't hungry between meals. And by the way, guys, a few weeks ago, I did a presentation at the YouTube space in LA for creators. And it was a really cool reflection point because it made me just stop and think about how much I've been able to do and how much I've been able to share because of you guys, my AM peeps. I mean, I am so passionate about nutrition and what it can do for people and changing their lives, but I would not be able to do any of this without you guys watching my stuff. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, for sharing, for being a supporter of this channel. It It's meant so much to me. I mean, I honestly can't even express how grateful I am for you guys and for this community. Now going back to this topic, the composition of the food that you eat has a really big impact on your hunger levels and whether or not you'll be hungry after you go to break your fast. And because of this, I highly recommend that you check out the break fast mistakes video right here that covers all the mistakes that could be happening when you go to break your fast, especially if weight loss is a goal. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science backed information, join the AM peeps and subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday so that you can feel amazing again. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.